Welcome to KSR Data Vision Snowflake program. We have published a few other concepts on Snowflake, especially on architecture. So I would request you kindly go through that sessions for better understanding of this time travel and other in unique features the Snowflake is providing currently. So, well, we will move on to the today's agenda. So today we're going to discuss about time travel with Snowflake. So time travel sounds so fascinating here, right? So let's see what is time travel. Is it time travel really possible, right? Before we go into a conclusion, let's understand what is time travel and how Snowflake is providing this feature and designed and how can it really give a you know, flexibility of going past and you know, retrieve whatever the information we want or meet the requirements what you want, right? So what and when to use time travel features? Right. So if I read out the concept written, context written on the slide, do you wish you would travel across time, witness the evolution of your data over time without having to restore backups or implement a fully functional data warehouse as a business user? Right. So this is everyone wants. So any industry you take, right. So there is a databases, there is a data warehouses, a lot of things will be maintained by a company. So everyone wants to go into back, uh, you know, a bit of back in the databases. They want to understand, you know, uh, what was before and what is now, right? There are particular situations, right? So there is, the, 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 in a worst scenarios, what happens is, um, you know, in majorly in a particular areas, like how what will happen is, uh, you know, accidentally we would have been deleted a data, okay? Uh, that can't be easily restored. So for an example, I would say you have removed a table. Okay, unknowingly a new developer has been onboarded to a team and unknowingly he has removed a table. Okay, and then what happens is, uh, you know, that table is very important data for you or it would have been brought up for doing some kind of testing at a dev environment, right? So bringing a data into test, uh, you know, dev environment also will take a lot of time with a lot of approvals and involving a DBA team. Right. So that is not an easily restored stuff for us. And also update a table incorrectly and have no idea what it looked like before. So what happened unknowingly, someone has been updated the table or some other process. It could be an ETL process or a, some other functionality is, is running in the backend, which has updated the table. Uh, there is no clue for you that what, ha what was the data before and what did it exactly been updated. Right. So if you missed a snapshot window, right? So what happens is example, you take an Oracle. So what happens as a disaster recovery, one of the process in a disaster recovery, there is a snapshot process. So what happens is DBS will sh schedule a frequency of every five minutes or 10 minutes or 30 minutes. So they will start taking the snapshot of the data in case if something goes wrong, at least they can bring back the latest snapshot of that information and put it on a screen. Right. So this this kind of uh, you know issues might happen when we are running through a you know a business or a data. Right. So if you, if the other diagram says um, you know if something went wrong, so this literally this time travel give you saying that then pretend nothing went wrong and because you are under time travel. Right. So what happens is all these issues can be resolved or will be able to be resolved using a snowflake time travel. Feature. So, you know, you just pretend that nothing happened. All it needs is a few commands to be executed. Okay. And then your data is back onto the same shape what it was before the action. Right. So, let's take a one more example here. Right. So, at the bottom of this two line says developers or a data administrators occasionally find themselves in a situation where they would like to execute a single piece of code and revert back to the snapshot before their last test SQL execution. Right. So what happened is unknowingly you would have been dropped a table, unknowingly you would have deleted the data, you thought of removing some data and unknowingly you have removed some other data. You want to revert back to the previous position. Right. In that scenarios, all this time travel feature will greatly help you here. And the last point says Snowflake time travel allows you to go back in time and view a past data. So this looks pretty interesting. So if you have a chance of going back you can definitely make your things right way, right? Or you can, something you want to compare with your past, with your present. So definitely this time travel will help you. 
okay data that has been modified or removed right that could be have been modified or someone has put been removed simply so you want to go into previous thing and you want to bring back the data and resume your um, testing so that continue your process without any hassle here so let's jump on to a next slide so introduction to a time travel right using time travel we can perform the following functionalities with extreme easy so what you can do what all the things you can do with this time travel is we can query the data from the past that has been changed or deleted right so you by mistake you have removed data or intentionally you have removed data but you thought okay i want to check this data um, something previously how it was or or i updated the data now this is uh, you know example this guy particular guy is into in, in the us now i want to check where he was before right so in that scenarios all you need to do is it gives in a flexibility you can query directly the past okay and we can restore a databases tables schemas that may have been dropped right so what happened is unintentionally someone would have been dropped a tables database especially developers who newly onboarded into you know teams they would be not knowing the all things they are not acquainted to the process right you know at and what happens is unintentionally by mistake they will remove uh, run some delete commands or they will drop the tables in that scenario you no need to involve a multiple teams all it needs is a, a single commands it it's like at what time it, you want to be restored at before what time you want to restore so all you need is simple commands you can run yourself and get the table back to the same position and also you can also clone databases tables schemas of a specified time this feature basically combines cloning and the time travel together right so what happens is you got a requirement saying that okay uh, the customer was into a, a one package and he was paying this xxx amount and he that particular data got updated now he has upgraded his package and he's paying now by 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 amount okay so you got an analyst um, as you are an analyst or as as you got a request from your client saying that okay i want to understand what it was his previous um paying amount what was his current paying amount tell me the difference so that at least i can understand the behavior of the customer whether i can roll out some campaigns to him or not right so if you have this kind of questions right so what you can do is you can clone the table clone in sense you can take the copy of the table what was previous at the particular point of time example um, i had a data till today one snapshot snapshot one today i updated the data in the table so that becomes a snapshot two right so in if you refer the table you will have a snapshot two but how can i go to the snapshot one so what you can do is you can create an another table from this table saying that i need a snapshot one the i need the all the data of the snapshot which is a day current day minus one day till current day minus one day what of the snapshot was there okay all that you can get it into your different table or different databases or different schemas right you can bring back the data and you can start comparing it so you have the latest snapshot and you have went your time you used a time travel and you created a, another table with clone with a different snapshot now you have all the data ready and you can do all the difference and you can provide the kpis whatever the clients request right so that sounds really good so we can easily do uh, instead of instead, uh, there is another process etl follows in a type 2 um, you know type uh, type 2 and you understand that um, maintaining the valid from date valid two days and then uh, have all the records uh, you know in, instead of bumping up the your table storage right the snapshots will give you a great flexibility to go into the past right and this table you can see there is a continuous data protection life cycle okay what it says is current data storage uh, that means whatever the standard operations you are running on your tables could be a ddls or dmls or anything okay current data storage and time travel allowed right so time travel allowed is at or before that means at particular time before particular time or you can say undrop is the table table is dropped so you want to undrop the table so all you need to do is just run undrop table table name so it brings you back the table you don't need to reach out to dbas they have to go back to understand if the snapshot is there or not so you don't need to do all that kind of stuff right so it's a simple command you need to run okay and here we need to understand one thing time travel retention is from 1 to 90 days okay this differs between the addition to addition you are going to buy so snowflake provides a four different type of additions that is a standard enterprise business critical and then bps right so based on each 
addition, your the time frame will change. Okay, standard will comes with one and uh, enterprise you can have it till 90 days and um, the, in going forward the higher end Roman so you can have a 90 days so whatever the addition you're going to choose the that level of time travel you can you can reduce the time travel as well so there is no uh, mandatory that you need to have this time travel for 90 days so as it is a cost based right so they are going to save the storage in this one so as for the flexibility of your requirement or the company, right? Company, what they want to pay, you can, you know, modulate the number. Okay. And no user operations allowed. Data recoverable only by Snowflake, right? So what happens? The thing that you have a time travel for 90 days, okay? 90 days means after 90 days, your data is gone. The table is the table data retention you mentioned for 90 days, 90 days is gone, right? So what happens is once the table is gone and it will move into a fail safe okay it's it's a fail safe okay it move into a fail safe area and in this fail safe area it will be stored for a seven days okay any transient tables or you know any temporary tables all these tables will have only zero days of fail safe there is no fail safe for those kind of tables even the intention of the transients and the temporary tables majorly is to have only data for a temporary purpose. So uh, it makes sense to have a zero days and permanent tables, which where you have the restored the data for many days. So it has a seven days of fail safe. Okay. So what this blue box saying is you can't directly access the fail safe. Fail safe can be dealt only by the Snowflake team. Okay. So what you need to do is you completed your 90 days and you didn't notice that your time travel is going. You can put any flaw, you know, alarms and all on top of it. So in case if you miss something, you still have a seven more days available in the fail safe. All you need to do is you need to raise a request with the Snowflake team and ask them, provide the, all the table details, schema details, connection details and all to them. So what they do is they will retrieve back the tables from here to back to your, your you know, into your windows. Okay. So going to the next slide, the so account object type considerations. Snowflake standard accounts and more uh, you know, uh, additional additions, okay? Standards, enterprise, or business retail and more, okay? So that additions can remove time travel retention altogether by setting the retention period to zero days, effectively disabling time travel, right? So if you think that you don't need any kind of time travel because time travel is also cost associated. So if you think that I don't want any kind of time travel for certain schemas or certain tables, because that probably non-important tables are something, right? So in that scenarios, what you can do is all you need to do is you can just set your retention period to zero days. Okay. And in the next point says Snowflake enterprise accounts and plus additions, that is nothing but a business critical at the VPCs. Right, can set the time travel retention period for the transient databases, schemas, tables, and temporary tables to either zero or a one. Okay, so from enterprise addition onwards, for all the transient databases and temporary tables, like we discussed in the previous slide, either you can have it as a zero or it's just one day you can have it, not more than this. Okay, the retention period of, can also be increased to zero to 90 days for a permanent databases. That means you are going to restore the data from many days or many, you know, you want to do for a business analytics and the history analytics, a lot of things, right? So in that case, you can have from zero to 90 days, okay? You can manipulate this number at any time, okay? Based on this number, your table is going to stay in your databases or schemas, okay? So the whole thing I have uh, tabulated it in this period, you can understand what kind of additions we have, pre-addition, standard plus and enterprise plus. Okay, so in this temporary tables, you can see there is no uh, retention period, okay, time travel. So for free and standard, there is nothing for enterprise, it's zero to one for the temporary tables. You see for the transient tables, same as like temporary tables, you can see zero to one days, okay. For permanent, you can see the minimum in a free edition is one day and standard is zero to one days and uh, above any standard that is enterprise or a business critical or other ones, you can manipulate it from zero to 90 days. Zero is like, there is no time travel 90 days is the max time time travel you can have it okay so how does snowflake perform time travel right so we know time travel it it sounds so fascinating we understand what is time travel how does it perform time travel at what certain point of point in times it will work right so snowflake saves the state of the data before making any update of the data 
So what that means is, if when there is a new data is going to be loaded into a into a table, what it will do is it will not remove the data which is already existing in the micro partitions of the table. Okay, so it it what this will do is this is this is done by a snowflake internally and it is not visible to the user. That means you no need to take any extra actions on this one. Snowflake has been designed in that way how the micro partitions have to behave internally. Okay, and then all will be taken care by the snowflake. Okay, but the duration from which the state of the data is saved is driven by the retention period. So that means whatever the retention period you're going to select, that is zero to ninety days, zero to one, zero to one is something like you know as a default it is be provided zero to ninety days for permanent tables. This retention period is totally depend on the number you have been set on top of your databases, schemas, or tables. Okay. Now understand querying historical data using at or before clauses are one of three parameters. Okay, so what happens is at or before is the um, two keywords which will be associated with your time travel command. You can select out of three these some offset. Okay, so if you want some particular you know time frame, you want to select something like I know last sixty seconds, last eighty seconds, last ninety seconds, or I could call last third three hundred seconds, thousand seconds like that. You can have a offset, the difference in seconds from the current timestamp at which the query data or particular object you want to retrieve back, right? So I'll show some examples for each of the statements. So going through the statement and the timestamp, right? Statement is the query ID. So whenever you execute some query. And not only query, it could be any command you execute on a Snowflake. Okay, any DML command or a DDL commands you're going to execute on a Snowflake. So what happens is every Snowflake will every query will maintain its unique query ID. Okay, so that query ID also you can fetch. Example, I could say you have dropped a table. Okay, so that drop table also will have some query ID, right? So what you can do is capture that query ID. Okay, and what you need to do is you can create a table, select start from that query ID. So that means what before that execution, whatever is happened, whatever the shape of the table will get retrieved back and you can create a new table. Okay. Our example timestamp, like we discussed in a previous slide. So if example, you can say your data got changed today, but you want the till yesterday's point of data in your different table. So you can give a timestamp saying that um, 2021, 22, whatever the dates you want to do, and then Give the timestamp, special timestamp, historical timestamp, and then it, you can retrieve back the past data. Okay. So the next slide says enable, disable the time snowflake time travel, right? So we discussed this previously also. <clears throat> it's all the business has to decide whether they want to have this time travel. It's not mandated by a snowflake. It's a good to have a feature in case any disaster recovery to be done or anything to be retrieved data from past. Okay, it's all good to have it. Okay, but this is a this is a very unique feature uh, we can get from a snowflake where you don't need to involve in multiple teams, where you don't need to maintain some snapshots, where you have need an extra storage, or uh, there is no administrative overhead activities for you. So there is nothing, it's a zero maintenance for you, right? So all you need to do is you need to set the number of what you want to have on that particular table, okay? So let's read out. The maximum retention time in the standard edition is set to one day by default. So that we discussed in the previous period as well, the standard edition will always have a one day by default, that is 24 hours period, okay? The default for your account in a Snowflake Enterprise Edition and higher can be set to any value to 90 days. That is from zero to 90 days. Zero is a no retention and 90 days is the maximum retention. Okay. The account default can be modified using a data retention in days argument in the command when you are creating a table schema or a database. Right. So whenever you are creating some object, it could be in a table or it could be a schema or it could be a database, right? How can you set this time travel? So you can have this parameter data retention time in days. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, there is a uh, underscore missing here. So in days, so you can set either zero or a 10, 20 up to 90. You can set it on the particular database. Okay. Databases or a table or whatever. Okay. If the database or a schema has a retention period, the duration is inherited by default for all objects created in the database or schema. So what it means, 
if you have a database created or if you have a schema created whatever the tables underlying the underlying that database or schema right so all that will inherit with the retention period you kept on this particular database or schema <clears throat> right so you no need to explicitly mention on every table level or a view level so automatically it will get from the parents okay so how it said this example create table table name and the columns i have mentioned and data retention time is equals to nine days i have given okay so you can see this is not a temporary table this is not a transient table in case if you see it is transient or temporary table you see create table create temporary table it will come create transient table it will come so there is no nothing has been keyword mentioned so it automatically takes as a permanent table okay no click time travel cannot be turned off for the account okay but it can be turned off for a individual databases schemas tables by setting up the object data retention in times is equals to zero right so what it says is on an account level you can't turn it off okay you can turn it on at database levels if you have a 10 databases each database you can go and you can make it as a zero okay you can't turn it on a databases the reason is in case by mistake also someone set it on an account level all the databases tables and all the objects if you set it to by mistake as zero everything will be wiped off okay keeping that in mind they have made it little granular here okay you can have go on to on a data this is the high level hierarchy right so you can keep your data retention on a database level so as soon as you keep the data retention here after your zero zero as if you keep a zero or a one after the particular retention period all the tables will go off okay will move into a fail safe okay so to keeping that mind to make it little safer they made it they, they didn't made it on account level they made it on a hierarchy okay so you can see we are, i have a set of commands which are executed here which are actually brought up to provide the whatever the theory we have talked about right so i'll walk through here and i'll explain the each command here okay so what i'm doing is first i'm just changing the timestamp to utc which is easy okay so and then i'm just keeping the utc timestamp here so let's see that i will capture the timestamp okay because we are going to change the data eventually so that we want to bring back into a previous stage right so i'm going to run and i'll capture the timestamp okay so the timestamp is going to be this i'll have and copy paste here so to capture the timestamp all i did is select timestamp right so any timestamps or accounts or anything it will come directly from the metadata cache so we will discuss that in a previous sl next slide so i'm just highlighting it the person whoever is trying to give us no prix certification there could be a question saying that select current time stamp current session current warehouse or all this kind of you know metadata related stuff all comes from the metadata cache okay so now what i am doing is i have a table called as a reason inside snowflake data lab and public is the schema okay let's select some records in this okay so there are five records there are five records so these are all the records um africa america us asia europe and middle east okay so and you can see the query id here so for every query there is a query id will get um, you know created okay now we have the data in the table so now what we will do is we will update this you know table for all the columns as a cool country okay so let me execute this update statement okay now i have executed so it is saying all the five records has been updated and you have a query id here so let's go and check what is the data has been updated so everything is updated to cool country okay it's so cool now okay let's now the question is i have changed the data right so you the question comes is how can i bring back my old data into the same shape right so what happens in that case so i want to give so first thing is i am doing in a time stamp before before particular time right so the time we have already captured here so let me take this time time stamp so all i do is i give a time stamp here okay what i'll do is i'll bring back this data so you see all my data this looks interesting isn't it so now you could say we we are able to access the data which is updated right so you see i'll just query again in actual table by seeing table you have this data right so the updated data if you want to go back the data you want to see particular time stamp 
So all you need to do is you just run this query. Okay, you can see the previous data. So how a same table? You see, I'm not querying a different table. It's the same table actually. Same schema, same sorry, same DB, same schema, same table, same exactly same. Right? How a same table is maintaining a two snapshot, two dimensions of data? Right? So what happens? As I mentioned, there is a micro partitions maintained by each table, each object inside a snowflake. And micro partitions will not delete, and you know the based on the retention period you have mentioned. Okay, so in that case, what happens? It even have the this data in memory at the different micro partitions, and whenever you fetch this particular timestamp, it will immediately the metadata able to understand immediately that you are querying a before timestamp and fetch your results with no data latency, no time latency. Okay, so you could see how quick this query is running, and this query is also producing with the same. Same, you know, speed. There is no change in the speed as well, right? So now understand. So now here we understand before particular timestamp I would call it. Okay. Now I am going offset. That is like a some three hundred seconds or a five hundred seconds, right? Or else I would call it as um, you know ten seconds. So or uh, what I am doing is I'll just execute. Okay, you could see the data for um, you know sixty seconds back. The data is like this. So let's think that there is a Three minutes back, so you could see three minutes back. Or my data was like this. One minute back, if I just executed one minute back, right? So one minute back, my data was different, updated version, right? So let me run this one minute back, right? So one minute back, my data is updated, and at that position, the data looks like this. Cool country. Before three minutes back, it looks like a with the different comments. Okay, so. You can either go with the timestamp, or you can go with the offset, or you can go with the query ID. Also, we'll go to the query ID now. Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm updating the table for the R comment with null. All these values I'm going to update it as a null. Okay. So everything is updated. It is saying five, and the query ID is the query ID is also updated. So what I'll do is I'll go. I'll copy the query ID from here. Okay. So I copied the query ID. I'll paste it here. Okay, I copied the query ID, so you can you can can verify two zero nine A two zero nine A. So well, good. So now we will see how the data looks, right? So I updated the data as a null, so you could see everything is updated as a null, right? So what I need to do now is I want the data before this null come in, right? So what I need to do is before this query statement, right? So I'll come here, I'll paste this query statement, okay? So I'll run this query. So before the null, it was a cool country we updated. So you could see what I'm saying is before this query ID execution, right? So in that scenario, so I got a cool country. So again, I'm saying it's the same table, same schema, and same database we are doing. All it is like internally, the micro partitions will play that role and provides the date latest, you know, the information at particular point in time, whatever that you are looking for. Okay, so. To highlight again, so either you can go with the timestamp, or you can go with the particular offset, or you can go with the statement of a query ID. Okay, there are three options we have in a time travel. Which are you are familiar with this, you can use it. Okay, there is no any clause that you have to go with either uh, any uh, mandatory of this for this scenario. It's not thing like that. You can go with any kind of thing you want. Okay, so now think that we, I want to create a table. So you have you got an option saying that uh, I want to compare a latest snapshot with a previous snapshot. Okay, three minutes back snapshot. Okay, so what I'll do is right. So first, let's see three minutes back. What was the data shape? Okay, three minutes back, the data shape was cool country. Let's go little more back. So that is a five minutes back, right? So five minutes back, what was the shape? So five minutes back, also it's a cool country only. Let's go a little more of eight minutes back. Okay, eight minutes back because we were running some queries. It's already time was running, so eight minutes back this was. Now I want this snapshot of data. So what I'll do is I'll create. I'll just run this one query. Okay, query is executed now successfully. What I'm trying to do here it is. There is a two options. If you got a requirement saying that I want the previous snapshot with comparing with the latest snapshot, so you want to bring up your previous snapshot, right? So what you can do is you can bring your previous snapshot like this, creating a different table, 
or someone would have dropped a table and you want to recover the table you can undrop it if you want to drop or if you want to have a recover that particular data right so you can recover the particular data based on this one okay let's see how the data has been actually pulled into this table right so there were five records yeah cool five records is there let's see the data so you can see the data i have the first snapshot of the data the first snapshot of data is here now i have the first snapshot of data and i have the second snapshot of data that is a cool country now you can easily compare what happened between the times right so that's the usage of a you know um, time travel you can bring back you can clone the data or you can have the copy you can recover the data particular time stamp or a offset or anything right so now understand it table retention change okay so we know that we discussed data retention times in days right so is equals to zero so what i am trying to do is the table which i created on the above statement right what i am doing is i am changing the data retention period for this to zero okay this is a standard edition by by default it will get a one day of that is a 24 hours of a data retention now i am changing it to make it as a zero okay so i'll make it as a zero okay successfully executed you could see query id is also there now see whether the table is exist or not right so the table is exist okay let me go here so what it is saying is the table is exist and you could see that the retention period is being changed to zero okay so you can update the retention periods you can bring you know uh, remove this data retentions but this this data retention time in period is not allowed over an account level it always has to go with an hierarchy either you want to go with a database or you want to go with a schema or you want to go with a tables or you want to go with the views or something okay this hierarchy so if i set you can't set so that's a restriction the reason why we are not giving an account level is if you set on account level all your db's data inside the hierarchy will all will get wiped out okay so that's the demo quick demo this particular slide is for the people who are preparing for a snowflake or snow pro certification okay let's read out the question here data retention time in days parameter is defined as a one day at the account level okay and then the same parameter is set to a seven days at a database level okay i'm repeating again one day at the account level and same parameter is set to a seven days at a database level okay now a table is created inside the given database without specifying any explicit data in retention days parameter okay so inside this database there is a table created for that table they didn't create any data retention period in days okay what would be the data retention period for the table okay we just discussed account level data retention days is not at all into consideration okay the only consideration is the top hierarchy is a database okay or a schema or a table level okay if you have mentioned the retentions on a database level so automatically is chained that is a schema or a tables inside that will inherit that particular number of retention period days and it will maintain the same retention periods okay so the answer is 7 okay repeating again 7 days at a database level and no retention data on a table that means the table will lies under the database so that means it automatically inherited the 7 so the answer is 7 if the retention period is specified for the database or schema the period is inherited by the default for all objects created in the database or schema okay so this is a one important question you can expect in your exam i believe this session has enhanced your knowledge on snowflake time travel we will be continuing our journey with you with more interesting concepts so with that well closing the session thank you stay tuned to this ksr data vision space